We're here at Star Wars Celebration Japan with none other than Boba Fett himself. Jeremy Bullock. Good morning, Jeremy. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? Great. I'm great. Is this... Now, you've been to Japan before, right? Yes, I have. I've been on a few occasions, but n nothing like this. This is a, a, the first sort of ever big convention, a celebration in Japan for 30 years. Uh, I've been here before in a lovely thing where you're traveling on the Shinkansen, the lovely tilting train, going to different shops to mm -hmm. do signings. But this is quite amazing here. Yeah, it really is an incredible country, and the people are so nice and oh, friendly. Fantastic. What, what is it about Japan and Star Wars fans in Japan that make them so unique? Um, well, I think it's that wonderful thing of, um, I, I speak for maybe um, Darth Vader, Boba Fett, Jango Fett. The shape of the helmet is very much like Samurai Warrior. When you meet some of the fans, they tend to stand back and just gently bow with respect yes and uh, the wonderful kurosawa films um you know it, it, the magnificent seven comes from the seven samurai yes uh and there's just this wonderful i, I don't know what it is they just feel that they can't come too close to you mm -hmm. it, it's a sort of respect but they've been they've been terrific this, this this weekend yeah you feel this influences on star wars from this country george lucas himself has said several times that kurosawa's the hidden fortress influenced a lot of yes, elements in yes. Star Wars, like uh, the characters of uh, 3PO and R2, which yes. were those two bumbling yes. guys from the movie when they were moving the That's wood right. around. Yes, yeah. um, so you really get that flavor. And I think the fans here pick up on that as well. I think they do. There's a lot of fans here. Um, some not speaking too much English, and of course my uh, Japanese is not the best in the world. A yeah. few uh, arigato, domo, and uh, konnichiwa. Konbawa. Right, that's I can, say, I can yes. say sushi. Yes, that's well, about that's it. it. And, and you sometimes feel, I should have made more effort before coming out here. Learned a little bit more Japanese. Ah. But it, 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 to me, you know, they, they're just so thrilled that you're here. And, you know, rushing up to you, shaking your hand, saying, thank you for coming. They, mm -hmm. Enough English to say, thank you for coming to our country. So, yes. So, you know, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. And Boba Fett is so popular. I mean, one of the most popular characters in the saga, and you must be very proud of that. Well, I'm, I'm, I am proud. I mean, it's funny when people say, you're proud of what you've done. I said, well, yes, I'm, I'm very proud to have been part of the, the trilogy, certainly the first trilogy, and then getting asked back in Revenge of the Sith to play a cameo role. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, very, I'm, you know, to, to know that this will go down in history as, as just a trilogy of films that mm -hmm. probably will never be bettered. No, no, or more celebrated. Yes. The love for Boba Fett's so strong that just recently you were given a, an honor by the costuming group, The Dented Helmet. They presented you with your own Boba Fett set of armor and helmet. Yes. And it was done down to the, the smallest detail. Well, I, there were 23, well, if I'm wrong, 24 people involved, 24 people involved uh, making this costume for me. And it, it, uh, it was sort of October last year when um, it was mentioned, I went to Dallas and they said, hey, you should have your own costume, Jeremy, you know, and sure. I said, oh, yeah. Like, so from that sort of jokey feel, uh, I ended up getting my own costume made and presented in April this year down at Dallas. And I have it at home sent through um, and I, I will wear it for special charity events I mean obviously it would be a bit sad if I was dressing up in it every day and going shopping good morning <laughs> uh, going down to the bank and said I'd like a loan good morning bank oh, manager. they give you the loan oh yeah I'm sure they would yeah but, and then some but uh, you know I will certainly wear it for you know for for charity events yes oh really okay yeah. now we were speculating that there was a night when you were home alone and you just took a look at that and decided oh what the heck and you threw it on and walked around the house as Boba True. Yeah. Well, no. I, I, funny enough, I've put it on since I've received it, but purely to see if we can get the costume on in a certain amount of time with the help of my wife. Okay. Uh, so we did it, and I went into the garden. Mm -hmm. The next door neighbour looked and thought, "What is going on? Uh, dressing up parties?" But it is. It's tricky to begin with. But I'm. You know, I think it would be quite fun to do it with the five hundred first Legion to be able to march and do some sort of um, charity event later this year. That would be really cool. Yeah. And um, the last time I could recall seeing you in the complete set of Boba Fett armor was in 2005. You uh, came to my hometown, Chicago. That's right. Um, you were doing a promotion with Hollywood Boulevard, uh, a signing there, and you appeared on the WGN Morning News. Yes, that was a bit of a shock. I didn't know that was going to happen. They said, have you got the costume? I said, well, no. So well, one of the other guys, the 501st, had a costume. Get him dressed in it. You can read the sports news. It was a, uh, a, I mean, it was funny, but I, then I rushed off, or, or I, not emailed, I phoned um, 
Lucasfilm to say, look, I'm, this is happening. I'm a bit caught. I can't say no. So I think, you know, it was good that I asked permission first you yeah. know, before. Yeah, and it was a funny moment <laughs> and unexpected. Yeah. And you did a great job. Um, well, I've always wanted sports. to be, a, a, funny enough, a sports uh -huh. uh, newcast because I'm, I'm a great fan of sports, you yeah. know, soccer, cricket, you mm -hmm. know, golf. So it'd be lovely to have... I, I knew nothing about American baseball. Right. On the third of the 45 and 20, 20 you know, so I did as much as I could <laughs> talking absolute garbage. Really. <laughs> well, um, I, I remember talking to you back then and you were telling me you're not the biggest fan of baseball. You are a cricket man. No, I'm a cricket man, yeah. and there's a wonderful test series going on now between South Africa and England. And I, no, I'm a huge sports fan. Cricket yeah. is that lovely leisurely, if you can imagine, the lovely green grass. Mm -hmm. People come in. Nothing seems to happen for five days in yeah. an international. You sit there, drink pims, and have a glass of beer, oh, white yeah. wine. People are in their hats, and, you know, and it's just a gentle thing. It's not people going mad. Unlike soccer, which I love, but that's a different different sport. Yeah, you're almost taking your own life in your yeah. hands going to attend one of those events. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, a friend of mine is the producer of the WGN Morning News. Oh, really? So I asked him, I said, you know, that was such a great moment. Can you get me a DVD of that that I can give to Jeremy? I have it right here. Oh, fantastic. You go. And if Being it, presented with it. Oh, brilliant. You know, Thank if you. If you have a website or something, you know, go ahead and put that up there. It's because I thought it was just a really fantastic moment. Oh, no, that's moment. fantastic, yeah. Jimmy. I'm sure. I'm, well, I'll, I'll definitely definitely play that. Hey, we're still looking for a sports guy here today for his anchor audition is J Jeremy Bullock. I hope I'm saying that right. Who plays Boba Fett. Good morning, Mr. Fett. It's my galaxy. You're just living in it. Now let's start with the White <laughs> Sox right. and the Angels. <laughs> it was a good game for Paul Conecco. In the first innings, he hit one high and deep to left field. That's a 3-1 homer to give them an early lead. Oh, you mentioned before that you did return to Star Wars in uh, Revenge of the Sith to play Captain Colton. Mm -hmm. And um, how did that all come down? I, well, it, it's it's funny. Uh, it, it happened to, totally out of the blue. Yeah, keep dropping the, no, the notes. Put them over yes. here. Um, uh, and we, we were on our way to Italy. And we just got out of the the car, going mm -hmm. to see our, uh, our son and his family. Mm -hmm. And there was a, <clears throat> can I speak to Jeremy? And Maureen said, there's someone on the phone. He's, he's American, I think. So, And it was Rick McCullum. Said Jeremy, is this Rick here? When are you over at? Uh, when are you in London again? And I said, Well, we're away for a week. He said, Fine, give me a call. I said, He said, and I ended up playing Captain Colton. It was a day's work. And he said, You know, thought you'd like to play a part of this. It's not very much, a little cameo, mm -hmm. but it was a cameo in the in the very last film. So yeah. you know, I was really pleased and very honoured. Yeah, and plus, um, you know, once again. You did get your face on the screen. Yes. We're so used to seeing you with the Boba helmet on. But you did play an Imperial officer. Yes, Empire Lieutenant Shekel. He yeah. was named as well. Yeah. So so you're all over the place. Well, it's, it's nice to be involved because it is like, I mean, the lovely thing is people said, have you retired, Jeremy? You know, what do you do now? I said, no, I'm still working. I've just done four, uh, four bits of uh, television in the last four months yeah that, that's um, why you had to miss wizard world chicago yeah right? i had to miss the chicago thing which was a shame but uh, you know i i still consider myself fortunate i'm still working after 52 years yeah. as an actor and i and i expect to work and that's not mm -hmm. being boastful if you're an actor and if you're confident in your ability if you go for an interview you've got to you've got to go for that interview saying to yourself I've got a huge, I've got a 90 percent chance of getting this role i think mm -hmm. i'm right for it in your mind if you don't get it you go oh well you don't worry about it. You've got to have a skin like a rhinoceros because, yeah. you know, if you say, oh, for goodness sake, I was so close. And this is what worries me about the X factor, where these people are auditioned, they're singing, mm -hmm. and they're told they're absolute rubbish. Get a move on and get out of here. Uh, yeah, so you, you've got to take the stick. You've got to take the stick and take it back and say, right, I'm going to do this mm -hmm. now. Um, it's a tough profession. Yeah, yeah. And the audition process is a lot like entering the lottery, yes. you know? Yeah. Um, there's so many people going after one single role. Yeah. And I mean, it says a lot about your uh, endurance that, you know, here it is 50 plus years later. Well, the, 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 the ho hopefully the, the people are now looking for 60 odd year olds. I, I played from 12 years old and, you, and people said, oh, you did that. I remember that. But now, you know, when my agent is saying, well, you're going to Japan. So I said, well, I'm definitely going to Japan. So nothing for that weekend. But at this moment, she's looking for work, for interviews, etc. So, 
you know, you, you carry on. Now, in the States, we don't see much of your television work. You obviously do a lot of stuff for British television. Yes. Is there a role other than Boba Fett that you get recognized for in England? Uh, I was in a soap opera in the 60s. That's a long time ago. So there's Mm -hmm. a lot of people going way back. Yes. Um, A comedy series called Agony. I was in it for three years. Robin of Sherwood is another series. And then the real diehard fans were from Doctor Who. Oh, yes. So I did two stories of Doctor Who. And I've Mm -hmm. just done um, an audio book. Uh, for Doctor Who, a story I did back in the uh-huh. 70s. And that's quite, quite fun to do, very tricky to do. The audio Because you're doing, yeah, you're doing nine different voices, female, mm-hmm. male, and you have to know when to switch into the male, that, and you, you do make mistakes. It's yeah. two intense days of doing an audiobook. Wow. Wow. I, you know, believe it or not, I've actually auditioned for audiobooks too. Have I haven't nailed really? one, but... Oh, it, it'll uh, happen. It'll happen yeah. sooner or later. It, like I told you, it's like... I look at it like entering the lottery. Yeah. I know a lot of people are going after these jobs, so I just keep trying. You well, know we, what? Hey, it doesn't we, cost well, me Well, the anything. thing is, we we'd still do. After all these years as an actor, you still go in. You hope you get it. If you don't, you've just got to say, oh, oh well, you know, you've, you know, confidence is there. It is a tough profession. Yeah. I'm glad uh, my sons, my three sons, two of them dabbled with it, mm-hmm. but I'm glad they didn't carry on because it is tough. It you, is. It's rough. Business. You end up saying, here, look, here's 10 pounds, you know, take it easy, you know, and, and I didn't want my kids to be, you know, thinking, oh, I'm not working because they, they tend not, they tend to sit down and say, no, I'm, I'm only available for acting. You've got to go and get your hands dirty, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, which my father hated me being an actor. I went out and painted people's houses. I waited tables, I waited behind bars, like, like everybody's yeah. done, and, and mm-hmm. people have got to do it. Yeah, now, was your dad a real sort of blue-collar kind yeah, of guy? Yeah, he was um, a scientist, really, uh, with oh. mushroom farming, but he hated the thought of me being an actor because, uh, as he said, it's a, bum's, it's a bum's profession. It's tough. You know, get a job. Get a job. Yeah, but right. he was still pleased. I mean, mm-hmm. before he passed away, he said, you've done... Uh, you done really well. He said, but think what you could have done. He still had to say, think what you could have done. <laughs> never satisfied. Like, yeah, no, but that never. probably motivates mm-hmm. you to this day. Yeah, it does. Still, I said, don't know. worry, Dad. You know, and then he enjoyed when he came to see me in a play. He said, that was really good. I enjoyed that. Was so, your dad around for uh, the Star Wars? Yes. Yes, he was. Yeah. yeah. He did, they, they never saw the films, no. my mother and father. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. preferred things that I did, the comedy series I mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. They, you know, behind a mask when my mother said, well, I won't see you, dear. Yeah, right. But there's not, not much point in me watching that because I won't see you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, what a mom would say, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, to get back to um, the Captain Colton thing, uh, you know, a lot of collectors will be listening to this. And uh, a lot of collectors would probably love to have a Captain Colton action figure. Well, yes. I mean, uh, what I think is would be ideal is to have a Boba Fett, Captain Colton, and Lieutenant Shekel, a triple pack. Oh, yeah. So of all the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, occasionally you see people from Hasbro, and I say, hey, guys, you know, what a wonderful mm-hmm. three-pack. I think it'll do well. Yeah. Um, so they, you never know. They might... They might make one. Right. Well, a lot of people are going to be listening to the show. So if you guys out there are hearing this and, and you like what you hear, write a letter to Hasbro. Let them know what you think. Yes. Give them an email. Get the triple Call pack. Get the triple pack. The Jeremy triple pack. <laughs> the that Jeremy would... triple pack. <laughs> I don't that know sounds, if that's exactly that how they're like, going to market it. That but... sounds like three beers, doesn't it? The triple pack. <laughs> well, that'll do as well. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe, just maybe, Captain Colton will uh, make an appearance on the live action television series that's uh, coming up. Well, you never know. The, the thing is, you do, I mean, I, it's lovely to have been involved with all the Star Wars things, and you never know whatever's going to happen. You can never, ever tell. And who knows? You know, you might find that uh, they'll say, hey, Jeremy, would you come along and play a wise old bounty hunter sitting in the corner, you know, filing his nails or mm-hmm. something? You know, you, this is what I, in a way, with the profession, what I like about it is the uncertainty. Right. Right. Well, it, well, I mean, it's it's precarious, but I love the uncertainty. I never know. Here I am. Where I'm talking to you, Jimmy. Now, mm-hmm. I I fly home in a couple of days, and the phone goes and I said, "You've got to go to Sweden. It's four months on this film." Wow, it does happen. I yeah. know. It, I know. It's uh, it's it's funny, but those that's happened to me five or six times in my career, mm-hmm. where out of the blue, they've said him. That's mm-hmm. the person we want. And you're prepared. You have that flexibility where you're going to go out there and, and, and you know, provide your skills and talents for whatever the production is. Well, so you're ready hope. to rock. Yes, you hope. Yes. You hope so, right? Yeah. Do you have any uh, inside scoop on the uh, TV show? Uh, no, not at all. No. I don't think anybody does, actually. Right. You know, it's... Um, 
here we are. There's uh, someone, someone doing a voiceover here. Yep. Um, Again, I don't understand a word of what I'm hearing either. No, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I haven't a clue what's going to happen with yeah. the live action show or what's going to happen in the future at all. Totally understandable. You know, I, it's in such a pre-production phase that, uh, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's going to take a little while for that one to get off the ground. <laughs> I was talking to Steve Sansweet. He says he's speculating. 2010, 2011. Yes, yeah. I'm they, thinking they, even later. The thing that. is that people will talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, and then suddenly it happens. If you could portray any other Star Wars character than the ones you already have, who would it be and why? I think Han Solo, mainly yeah. because he's very similar to uh, Boba Fett. Yes. They're very similar, they're rascals. You, you sort of people like Boba Fett because he's a well, he's more than a rascal. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he can be brutal. He's a bounty hunter. He'll take whatever he can get. Um, Han Solo is very similar, mm -hmm. but he's just on the nice side. He's, uh, he, he's um, a, a fascinating character, but I probably wasn't the right... I probably wasn't the romantic hero. I think Harrison Ford is is mm -hmm. perfect for that. So, yeah. you know, I can dream on being... You know, it's like someone says, did you ever think of playing James Bond? I said, well, I was, wasn't even offered it. Yeah. But, you know, it would be nice. Right. And that must have been... Uh, you have, to, right ha you have you. to have the right face, the right... You've got to be six foot one. I'm six foot. But you, you've got... And I'm stocky. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a sports soccer player. And, you know, it would be lovely. We all dream, you know, I'd love to play that part if I was given the opportunity. Right. Right. And, and that was a great experience for you to be on the set of James oh, Bond. Is, fantastic. Uh, Smithers. Yes. Smithers, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Q's assistant. Um... You know, they've opened up the doors, and I'm starting to see a lot of people fly in. So yeah, they're beginning to run to... If here we go. If they start uh, lining up here, uh, we will... Look uh, at them. There's, there's a few uh, sprinters for the Olympics there. Yeah, Look. they're running for the store right now. Wow. The uh, doors here for day two of Celebration Japan is just opened day up. Day two for Celebration Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is the Jimmy Mack Show. This is Jeremy Bullock calling in from Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> so when you're ready, get set, and let's go. Uh, what kind of music are you into these days? I remember you telling me you were a big Queen fan. Well, I'm and still. I still have that one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I am a huge Queen fan. I love classical music. I like. I like Debussy, mm. Prokofiev, Mozart. Uh, you know, I like a lot of bands. I, I I like some of the new stuff, but I don't know what it is. That sounds ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the stuff, I don't know what, what what it is. Who played it? Or um, you hear something and said, "Oh, that's nice." Uh, but Queen, when you see, uh, talking about Barcelona, the, when they had the Olympic Games there, and you heard this at the beginning of yes. the sports thing, Barcelona, ooh, right. uh, operatic voice. Oh, he yes. had Montserrat Caballé singing with him, Freddie Mercury. And they're a great group. And um, Brian May on the guitar, just sensational. I know. met Brian May once. You did? He was the nicest oh, he's, guy. Oh, he's a lovely ever, bloke. He's about six foot five. Yeah. He, uh, he was in Chicago, and I remember he had a terrible cold, and I had all these questions I wanted to ask him about Queen and recording with Freddie and all the albums they did, and all we talked about was cold remedies, yeah, because lovely. that's something yeah, I know yes. about being from Chicago, but, you know. <laughs> cold remedies, yeah. Because it gets cold in yeah. Chicago. It certainly does, sir. But I have a personal story. When episode three came out, and you were at the Hollywood Boulevard doing a signing, Yes. I brought my son with me, and he had a Darth Vader Slurpee cup, and he was drinking it. That's and right. You said to him, are you enjoying your slurp slurp, in your British way, are you enjoying your slurp slurp? And to this day, he still calls it a slurp slurp. Uh, a slurp slurp. Oh, I love <laughs> that it. Was oh, the that's the good thing. In, in English, he, he does it with an English oh, accent. yes, yes, he does. A slurp slurp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he said... I love sure the slurp slurp. He said, be sure to tell Jeremy that I still call it a slurp slurp. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's, I'm flying out to Japan. You bet I'll tell him. So I just, you know, to wrap it up, I just want to say on behalf of all of our listeners, thank you for this interview. We're so lucky to have a guy like you who played three characters in the films, who's out there being such a great ambassador for the Star Wars franchise. Well, That's the, why Rick the, brought you back. Well, the thing is, the Star Wars fans are, are terrific. You know, they're... they're you know, 99% are so polite and they come up and say, thank you for coming here. Well, we're very lucky to be invited here. Uh, I'm very lucky to be invited to Chicago and, and other different places. So mm. we're, we're extremely fortunate. Well, you know, Boba Fett was the coolest character and it seems only fitting that the coolest guy played the coolest character. Oh, well, that's very kind. I'll thank just you so to, much. I'll just have to go up for the next Bond now. The name's <laughs> Bond, James Bond. <laughs> 